We're back with the second part of uh, module two, and this is a really important part because this is when you are going to be planning your strategy. So it's a, it's a key point. And the first thing is to have a plan. Now, what I mean by that is if you haven't done TV before, you might want to start with your local, local stations. And so that way you can practice, see how you're doing before you go out around the country. But uh, that would be one kind of plan. Another kind of plan would be to group it geographically. In other words, if you want to get your message out to various stations around the country, you'll probably want to do it geographically. For example, when I was doing my, I'll call it my Southwest tour, I was doing Albuquerque, I was doing Phoenix, um, I was doing, you know, I was doing those, those particular states that were close together that I could go be on one airline and hop from one to the other. So you've got to figure out how, how do you want to do it? Do you want to do a, a 50 state tour, 48 state tour, 10 state tour, a Southern tour, a New England tour, uh, uh, you know, a California tour, whatever it is, have a plan, know who your stations are, know exactly uh, what you are doing, know exactly what is important in terms of getting your message out. I wanted a lot of clips from a lot of different stations because that's a part of, uh, you know, that's a part of who I am, but it's whoever you want to be. So it's up to you to decide how you want to plan your schedule, but you need a plan. And I would say, do it geographically, do it so it makes sense for you financially. Make sure that you're hitting the target areas that will be important for your message and de de decide how much time you want to spend on this. So that's important. Now, once you have your plan, I can't emphasize enough rehearse, rehearse, reverse. Now I would rehearse even your phone call. You may know, you think you know what you sound like, but you really don't. So rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. Now the reason I say that, I don't want you to memorize. Even when giving speeches, we never recommend you memorize because if you ever lose your place, then you're out of luck. But rehearse it enough so you know your main points and know what you want to get across. Because if the anchor sidetracks you, you know, you're going to have a hard time getting back to what you wanted to say. So rehearse, 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 even your phone call. Then take a look at how you are going to come across on camera. Should you be sitting? Should you be standing? What's your posture like? When you are sitting, make sure you sit on the edge of your seat because um, otherwise you look like you're, you're really frumpy. You're way back. You look like you're sinking into the, uh, sometimes they have a couch, sometimes they have a chair, but it looks like you're sinking in. So you don't have to sit on the very tippy edge, but more towards the front than the back and sit erect. And when you stand, make sure you stand very, very straight and tall and watch your hands. Now, you know, I'm very short. Most of you who know me know that I'm very short. So if I'm ever going to stand next to an anchor, I'm probably going to be on a box or I'm going to be very tiny. A couple of times I have done shows where the, the host and I are about the same height and that's great. It works out perfectly, but then don't lean on anything because usually if you're standing, they have some kind of a, a, a stool in front of you or a table in front of you. And sometimes you get to lean on it and that's not good either. So make sure you always make sure your posture is correct. Your hands are openly displayed. Do not have them in the fig leaf position. If you are standing, uh, make sure that you can count on your fingers if you need to, you know, if you're saying 0.1 or 0.2 or 0.3, but your hands should be not stuck in your pocket. They should not be in fig leaf position. Um, if you have both hands on your hips, it kind of looks defiant. It is a power pose again. Uh, you have to decide what is your message and how do you want it to come across? So, uh, it's very, very important. And then the other thing you have to think about is, are you in the area? For example, when I go and I give a speech somewhere, what I do is I contact, cause you cer certainly know when you're speaking in an area in enough time to contact the stations. So I get a list of the stations in the area, look at the shows that they have, see if there's any that I'm appropriate for. And then I get in contact with the segment producer and put a pitch in, which is what we're going to talk about later on, but that's what you do. So think about if you're in an area, don't say, oh, well, you know, 
I, I, I'm, I'm not going to worry about it. That's perfect for you. I remember I was doing a speech in, of all places, Kansas City, and I was speaking to a national convention and I was speaking on marketing. And so um, I had done, I, I had just come up with, out with one of my books. And so we lined up appearances at bookstores for book signing. We had me on, I think it was three radio shows. I did one, I think it was only one. It could have been two, but I think it was only one a TV appearance. And then I, I did my speech. And of course, when I did my speech on marketing, which everybody, you know, thinks is so hard, I said, now this is an example of what I did while I was here. And then I told them everything I had done. Well, their mouths just dropped open. Believe it or not, because I had done all those things, because I had been talking about marketing, that was my subject, I got booked in eight other places from people in the audience. So it kind of eight times my income. It was really amazing. So uh, think about that. And the other thing you need to have is props. And if possible, you know, have your uh, uh, host interact with props. I went, when I did my segment on exercise for seniors and I sat in a chair and I used props like water bottles and I did have my, my stretch band with me, but the host also dressed in workout clothes. She was a little tiny thing and she worked along with me and she used props as well. So the host can certainly interact with props. Animals are terrific, but no, they will take away from you. But that's okay. If you can get a, a, an animal from the Humane Society or uh, someone like that, well, that the people just identify with that. And the animal will usually get adopted because you will say, yes, I got this from the XYZ Humane Society and uh, this wonderful fellow is, is available for adoption. And someone will call the station and probably adopt that, that dog or cat. But this way you can say why the animal might be appropriate for what you're talking about. And usually it's for a good cause. So if you can use an animal, that would be great. And if possible, hold any prop that you have close to your face. If you've got a little dog or a cat, you can hug it close to your face. It shows that you're not afraid of them and that you love them. So that's very, very important. But your props are important. For example, I used a, um, a, a clock, a little clock with sand in it, you know, like a, a time capsule. And I was talking about when time runs out, um, when you're looking for a job and when you consider yourself too old, I used um, a flip phone and the iPhone to show the difference in technology. And, uh, you know, so I, I used different things. I had a trophy. Uh, also, I used a trophy and said, remember when you were young, and you would win a trophy or a medal and you felt really so great about it. So there are props that you can use that will tie in to what you're talking about. So remember, these are the things that are important. Get a plan for where, who, and how you want to conduct your TV or what we call media tour, or it could be only one station if that's the way you want to do it. Make sure you rehearse so that you are very comfortable with whatever, whatever the host asks you or whatever direction they take you in, make sure your posture is always appropriate, whether you're sitting or standing and that your hands are in a good position and not in the fig leaf or defiant position. And uh, make sure that you're working with props that you feel comfortable with.